everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. If you want to go on a tour of a 2008 Casita Spirit Deluxe, stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So today I'm gonna to take you on a tour of this 2008 Casita travel trailer. All right, touring 17 foot trailers is always a little tricky because it is so packed inside. So here is the entrance way. You do need to watch your head on Casita trailers when you go in because it is easy to hit your head. And I don't know how many times we've hit our head on that. So it is raining and I'm gonna close us right on in here. This is actually my boyfriend Michael's travel trailer. He purchased this last year, and then he and I went through and did a complete renovation of the trailer to really make it look new, modern, and really comfortable here on the inside. I absolutely love the interior of this trailer. It is really cozy, and there have been moments where I've debated giving up the base camp for a casita. But unfortunately, this is actually our last day with it. It is going to its new owners tomorrow, and Michael is going to be switching from the Casita travel trailer that he has to tow over to a truck camper. So I'm gonna take you on a final tour of the Casita, show off all of the renovation work that we did. You might be wondering why I'm wearing glasses and it's raining out. I am recovering from eye surgery, so you're gonna have to deal with the sunglasses throughout this tour. The Casita RV is a really cute, very comfortable 17 foot RV. One of the things that makes it so cozy on the inside is that the walls are actually fully carpeted. It is a marine grade carpet and it's one of the features of a casita that is really amazing. It makes it much quieter in here. It helps insulate the walls and the construction of the casitas are pretty simple. They're basically like two boat hulls stacked on top of each other and then this carpeting finishes off the walls instead of seeing the rough fiberglass. So for some people, the carpet on the walls is a little bit weird. I personally find it extremely cozy. The really entertaining part is when you have animals in here and you actually have to take a vacuum cleaner and start vacuuming your walls. It's also a fully featured RV. So it comes with the rooftop fan. This model has the air conditioning in it. You have a sink a two burner stove. It has some ventilation above the stove. There is a wet bath. So you have your toilet and your shower. There is a large gray and black tank. There's also a small freshwater tank. You can get a bigger one in some models, but this one is pretty small. I think it's about 15 or 18 gallons. All right, in this little casita, there were a lot of different things that we did. Overall, I think we maybe spent between two to $3,000 to do all of the renovations. I don't remember the exact price of things when we go through, but I'll kind of give you an idea of if it was expensive or not. Some things are pretty labor intensive, but pretty cheap to do and make a big difference. One example of that is paint. So the 2008 Casita comes standard with a light wood panel color. And what we did was we pulled off all of those wood panels, we removed all of the hardware and painted everything. All the cupboards are now this gray color. It is an iron gray paint from Bear and all of the hardware is now an aged copper color. So just those minor updates really completely change the feel and look of the Casita on the inside. That one was a pretty cheap renovation overall. I think we went through maybe a quart of paint, if that, and then two to three cans of the copper spray paint. It did take several days in order to get everything off, paint it, put it back together. So it was very labor intensive, but overall not very expensive to do. Since we painted all of the hardware for the cabinets a copper color, we wanted to keep the interior matching that copper, including the hardware for the tables. So the tables have a base down here that sits into the floor. And then it also has the stem and the table attachment up here to the table as well. All of that we spray painted copper. In addition, down at the bottom here in a casita, there's usually a big piece of wood that covers this area because the carpeting here has some sort of treatment on it. And it's really not that pretty to look at. But having that piece of wood here really takes up a lot of the legroom. 
and it makes sitting at these tables a lot less comfortable. So this is just a piece of PVC pipe that was cut so that it will cover the wires that go through here. Spray painted it copper and then put it in here and it really opens up and gives you a lot more leg room. In addition, this is not the standard table piece that comes with the casita. This is actually the table leg from the base camp. So I had an extra one because I always leave my bed in the base camp down. So we took the extra pole, we purchased this bottom piece, and now this table leg can come out and we can put in a smaller one. The reason we had to replace this is in a stock casita, it comes with a thin piece of wood that can rest here on these benches and create a bed on this bench. However, Michael ended up making a custom tabletop and this is a custom walnut wood tabletop. It is much heavier than the stock tabletop that is in here and those ledges don't really support it and we wanted to make sure that there was something underneath. So the table leg that we use now out of the base camp, it has the long leg for when we want this to be a dining table and then it has a short leg so when it needs to be a table laid out. We really wanted everything in here to match. So even in the custom walnut table, there is an old knot that created a really big indentation in the wood. That was filled up with a copper colored epoxy before the epoxy tabletop was put on top. So now there's a really cool copper feature right in the middle of the table. This also has a full epoxy top. So it is very hard and it will stand up to everything. The big thing to keep in mind if you're going to do this kind of table, it is very heavy. So it will come off the table mount while driving down the road, especially dirt roads getting to a boondocking spot. So if you ever do this kind of custom table, I highly suggest taking it off the table mount, putting it on the bed or somewhere safe while you're in transit. To continue on with the custom woodwork, here in the kitchen, there's an additional cutting board or working surface that we put in. So the Casita kitchen is pretty small. It has the two burner stove, the sink, and then a little bit of extra counter space when you have the cabinet down. However, there really isn't space for a good cutting board or extra counter space for placing things when you're cooking. So we installed this cutting board. It was a little bit of an engineering feat in order to get this in here. It is a solid walnut piece of wood and it is just oiled up so that it can be used as a cutting board. It can flip over and then these two legs will catch it and that makes it a really solid, sturdy cutting surface. It's also a great place to put dishes when you're washing them and to just store pots and pans while you're cooking here on the two burner stove. Now, in order to make this work, there were a few things we had to do. Over here in the corner, you'll see there is this kind of ugly door stop. We needed something in order to prevent the wood from hitting the two burner stove and causing issues there. So that door stop will touch the counter and keep the wood from really bashing on those burners, protecting the wood, also the burners as well. Then in order to support the wood when it is flipped out, we needed some sort of leg support system. These legs are attached to this wall just by screws and a couple of hinges. As you'll notice, they actually fold all the way down to the bed. So we needed to create some sort of method to make the legs stop at just the perfect angle in order to support the board. How we were able to achieve that is each leg is cut with an angle so that it has a ridge on the end. And then the cutting board has these breaks that are built right into the cutting board. That way, when you take the board and you flip it over, those legs catch right on those breaks and it becomes that solid surface. And then the board itself is just connected by these hinges that we found at Lowe's. They're more unique hinges and we needed those in order to give it the 180 degree flip capability. So with a few hinges, a door stop, and then a gorgeous piece of walnut, you were able to make a really cool cutting board and more than double the counter space that you have here in the casita. When adding this cutting board into the kitchen, we also had to be really careful to not cover the heater vent where the hot air comes out and also the AC outlet over in the corner. So with the custom mattress that we put in, we had to make sure that it was low enough not to cover the vent. And also we had to make sure that the legs were thin enough so that they could go on either side of the outlet and the vent and not cover anything up. One of the easiest upgrades that we did in the casita is this backsplash in the kitchen. So this backsplash comes directly 
directly off Amazon and it comes as a big square. However, that big square is made of these small individual tiles. That makes it really customizable. If you're able to fit the whole big square in, you can just take the square and attach it. And then when you need to do the small side areas and really get into the detail, you can cut off each individual square and attach it by itself. Because of the size of the backsplash here, these tiles fit in absolutely perfectly. So this section here is actually one full piece. And then up here are some small tiles that we had to just fit up there. And then over on this side, we did have to do a little bit of individual tiled work, but all of it has a really strong stickiness on the back of it. So you just peel off what came with the tiles and you stick it on the wall. So we cleaned the wall with alcohol before we put it on there. We stuck those on. They've been on there for a year now, bouncing down, boondocking dirt roads. They've gone through winter, summer heat and everything's still really well attached. So it was a little finicky to get the tiles, get them in there nice and straight, but overall it was really pretty simple to do. Over here in the entranceway, we really didn't do too much renovation or changing other than changing the cabinet colors. This little elk antler key holder is something that we added in just to provide a little bit of character and it just makes it unique when you walk in the door. And then over here on the front is the large storage cabinet. We really didn't change too much on this. We put on some of these double-sided hooks just to give some extra storage, but that's really about it in there. And now into the bathroom. So the Casita does have a wet bath, meaning that the toilet is in the shower. It does have a sink though. So some wet baths will just have a toilet and then you need to come outside and wash your hands in the kitchen sink. The Casita does have a little sink in there, which makes it handy. So now for the question I always get, how big is the shower? I am five foot seven and you'll see I can get in here and then have a couple inches to spare. The shower head is actually at a pretty good height. So I could wash my hair in here and you can take it off, shower, rinse, and do things as well. If you are more than five foot seven, there is not much clearance in here. So if you are more than six foot tall, you're gonna be crunched up near the corner because the ceiling is arched with that front arch of the RV. But as a five foot seven person, I actually fit in here really comfortable. And there's a lot of elbow room. So you can do some dancing in the shower if you want. Dance like a chicken. And then you got the toilet here, but overall standard wet bath. There is a little window in here, which is nice. So you can pop that open, get a little bit of ventilation. There's also a rooftop fan. So you can get good cross ventilation there in the wet bath. With the bathroom as well, we really didn't do much renovation. We just painted the door and then added on some of these hooks. There is a shower curtain, which is tucked back here. So when you're showering, you actually pull the shower curtain across. It protects the door, meaning the paints, and then also those hooks. So they don't have to be waterproof hooks or anything to put them on there. It's a great place to store your towels. And it's actually a pretty big wet bath overall, especially for a 17 foot trailer. If you've ever seen a stock casita, you'll know that they typically come with with those window shades that have the little plastic piece in order to make the shades move up or down like that. And then they have the strings to actually raise the shades or lower the shades. They're a little bit of a pain. You'll see these loops here on the side of the windows. And when you drop the shade, you actually have to put the shade edges into these loops in order to keep them from flopping around while driving. Between the look, which we didn't really like, the whole having to attach it while you're driving, they really were a pain and they were also a little bit discolored from age. So with removing a couple screws, we completely removed all of the shades in the entire casita. And instead what we did was we replaced them with these curtains. So these are just small curtains that you can buy right off Amazon and they are room darkening as well as insulated. So these are all around the whole casita in order to make it look a little better and then also have a place to secure the curtains. We took this leather band and we just attached it to a drapery hook, which is what you can use to hook into the carpeting in the casita wall. So with those drapery hooks and then that small piece of leather cord, you can tie back the curtains, make them look fancier sitting out like that. And it really gives it more of a homey look. The trick with hanging the curtains is that you need a curtain rod in order to do so. The casita has a metal window frame attached to the fiberglass, and then you have the carpeting all over the wall. So there really wasn't a good way to secure the curtain rod into the walls. 
However, when you removed the window shades that come stock, it left the screw holes from where those window shades were. So what we did was took this dead aspen tree branch and split it down the middle. We also took off all the bark so that you can see the different coloration of the aspen wood underneath, which is really beautiful. And we made custom wood pieces that went along the top of each window. So it was drilled right through where you can put the screws to attach it into the frame. And then the curtain rod just attaches right onto the aspen wood. And it's actually really secure and it holds these curtains really well. The only downfall is you have to watch where the different knots are on the wood because this window only opens about three quarters of the way because the window does hit one of those knots. Other than that, it gives it a really beautiful trim, a more rustic outdoorsy look and you don't have those ugly white curtains anymore. You'll also notice in order to match the copper everywhere else, this is just a cheap curtain rod out of Lowe's. It was only a few dollars and we spray painted the whole thing copper as well as all the supports. That way we kept with the copper theme and it looks a lot more expensive than it actually is. The final renovation that we did here in the kitchen was to put these cushion covers on the stock 2008 cushions. So the cushions themselves are your typical 2008 RV swirly pattern cushion, which the colors are okay with the interior, but it really didn't match the more modern design. So these cushion covers, they come in one size. So you'll notice that they're a little baggy on the back cushions, but on the seat cushions, they actually fit perfectly. And they just simply pull up over the cushion and go right on. They're great for having pets because they're really easy to pull off, wash, and put back on. It's also a much cheaper alternative to reupholstering the whole cushion or buying new cushions. So that was our cheap and easy way of making the cushions look a lot more modern. Now for the bed area. The bed area is normally a table that can be pulled up and then you have a seating area on either side and you can fit four people comfortably in the seating area. It also all folds down and it turns into a full size bed minus the corners of the casita. Now the cushions that come stock with the casita are your typical RV cushions. And when you put them down to sleep on them, they're not that comfortable, especially for somebody like me who is a side sleeper. So what we did was we just ordered a memory foam mattress off Amazon and memory foam is really easy to cut with a bread knife. So once the memory foam arrived, we opened it up, we let it completely inflate and then we brought it here into the casita and we cut out the corners so that it fits the custom shape of the casita itself. This is only a few hundred dollar mattress off Amazon. You can buy fully customized mattresses for your RV but cutting off the corners of a stock one is much cheaper, much easier to do. We then put a waterproof cover on the mattress to protect it from having the dogs in here and then put on regular sheets. It's something that I found if you sleep in regular sheets in your RV, it feels a lot more like home than if you're sleeping in sleeping bags. So we have the pillows, the sheets from inside, and it's actually a really comfortable mattress and a really cool area to wake up to because you've got the windows all around. And from here, I can stare out at my own base camp. So you got quite the good views over here as well. The other renovation that we did in the bedroom area is to cut out this section of this wood piece. This is a support of the casita. So you do need it as almost like a rib or a support of the walls, but it usually comes through here and it really segments off the two different areas of the casita, making it feel a lot smaller. So Michael just simply took a saw, cut out this small window opening and then we painted the whole thing gray. It simply pulls out of the wall, it's not screwed in, so it's actually pretty easy to remove, paint it, alter it, and then slide it back in. Just by removing that little bit, it really opens the inside of the casita up and makes it feel a lot bigger than it really is. Another really easy renovation was to take the covers off the lights and replace the stock bulbs with LED ones. This gave it a much warmer interior lighting as well as saving a lot of electricity. You may also notice that the flooring in here is completely different. So this is a waterproof laminate flooring that we just picked up from Lowe's. It took two or three boxes of the flooring and after thoroughly cleaning the floor that was in here, we just laid all of these pieces on top. 
There are only about four pieces that are the full length and regular shape. So the floor did take a lot of custom cutting and it took a lot of time and effort to get it in here. The nice thing about the floating floor is if any of it ever gets damaged, we do have extra pieces and you can easily swap it out. Around the edges, it wasn't always 100% perfect where it lined up exactly. So once in a while you would see a little bit of a gap. How we solved that was we, we took a gray waterproof caulking and we put a bead along the floor and then just smoothed it out. You can barely even tell standing up that there is a caulking around the floor and it really just finishes off the edges and gives it a much cleaner look. And then we did put solar on the roof as well. So one of the first things we did was install 340 watts of Zamp solar panels on the roof. They were used panels that we purchased off of a friend for pretty cheap. And then Michael created the custom aluminum brackets. It's just aluminum he purchased from the hardware store, bent into the brackets. And then we used a heavy duty mounting tape in order to attach them to the roof. They've been up and down the highway at 70 miles an hour, up and down boondocking roads, and that tape is holding strong. In order to complete the boondocking electrical, we added in some 12 volt plugs and that lets him charge a phone and different things like that off of the USB and also puts in a 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet where you can plug in a small travel inverter. This casita does not have a full house inverter in it. We didn't want to put that kind of money in since Michael was just traveling in it part time. So with the 12 volt plug, we just used a simple inverter that you can get off Amazon plugged it in there, and then he could put his AC plugs for his computer and different things like that right into the inverter. In order to wire the solar from the roof into the battery compartment and then run the wires in here to the 12 volt plugs, we use the old satellite dish box that is on the outside of the casita. So it's just an open box that has a weather seal on it, drilled part of that out so that we could run the wires through. The wires could then come through where that satellite was down into the solar controller, the 12 volt plug, and then also the battery compartment. So the nice part is we didn't have to drill any new holes into the casita shell at all. And everything is able to be hooked up behind the scenes. So you don't see any wires or anything like that hanging. With that setup, we could easily run the heater, laptops, everything like that in here. You don't have enough power in order to run the AC because there is no inverter in here built in, but it really worked well for everything we needed. If we had kept the casita for longer, we were gonna look into upgrading that battery to a lithium, but unfortunately we are selling it sooner than we thought. So it's gonna go as is, but that would be a great upgrade for the trailer as well. So that is it. That is all of the different renovations that we did on this 2008 Casita. I am going to say my final goodbyes to the little Casita and send it on its way. It really is a very comfortable little RV. Casitas are known for their quality. And I do know a couple people that have lived in them full time and absolutely love them. So we are definitely not partying with the Casita because it's a bad RV. It's just that towing a travel trailer doesn't work well for Michael and his lifestyle. So he's switching over to a truck camper. Sometimes that happens where you try out an RV and you find it doesn't work. So you quickly trade it in for something else. It's part of the trial and error. So if you have any questions on the reasons he's switching on any of the renovation work that we did, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.